It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and it's another week where we have a ton of movies that I have not seen. So I can't really do go into full details on the reviews for my for these movies because well, I have not seen most of these movies. So I'm only going to be able to judge from the trailers. So with that said, let's get right to it. Let's start with the we got five movies to look at. Let's start with the first movie that we have here, and that is the sequel to Class of 1984, Class of 1999. In 1998, six million violent incidents took place in American high schools, including 29,927 teacher fatalities. The public school system has been reduced to a battlefield. But the Board of Education has just found a solution. Tommy! The perfect solution. You're next, Mr. Cope. Class of 1999. What are you? The class of 1999. These androids were supposed to educate the students. Battle droids. Battle droids. To graduate is to survive. The same director that did Class of 1984, Mark L. Lester, actually directed this movie. He also did movies like Firestarter, the original Firestarter, Commando. He also did Armed and Dangerous with Richard Pro I think it's a... No, John Candy. I was about to say Richard Pryor. But, um, yeah, like I said, I haven't seen this movie. I haven't seen the original Class of 1984. But, um, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, really, it's really, it is just kind of like a cool concept. Kind of like, a, kind of reminds me of an early version of The Faculty, that movie that, uh, Robert Rodriguez made in the 90s with the, with the kill, with the teachers from outer space who were actually, the teachers who were aliens from outer space in disguise kind of gave me a feeling of that movie so um i mean this could potentially be some fun it's a, it doesn't really look like anything that's outside of what i'd usually expect to see from a sci-fi action thriller like this so i don't know it could be something to watch one day but like i said i can't really go into too much detail on this particular film because i haven't seen it so uh let's go ahead and move on to the next movie <laughs> First of taxes. We've been waiting here an hour already. Hey, it's a holiday. Puerto Rico's 26th anniversary is a U.S. Commonwealth. At a moment of pride. This is going to be a great day, my friends. <laughs> On a day of celebration. We're not going to hurt you. Don't worry. And there's certainly some stuff in here that could be considered very topical, especially considering today's news and how that's played out. But on the other hand, though, this looks like a type of movie that it feels like another one of those movies that was blown up for television, like it was originally intended to be something to be seen as the NBC movie of the week. But 
because they have a cast that includes Amy Irving, Andy Garcia, Lou Diamond Phillips, and Robert Duvall. I guess they thought it was good enough for the big screen, but I don't know. I haven't heard too many good things about this one, so I can't really comment on it, but I mean, like I said, it looks like a movie that's going to be going to be primarily a movie that looks like something made for television blown up for the big screen. Unless somebody unless it really has more of a critical reception that I'm seeing on here cuz I couldn't find any decent reviews for this one and nothing nothing about the movie really stuck out for me, so Judging from that trailer, I mean. So, uh, yeah. That's a show of force, and now on to the next movie. Destiny had been foretold. Its fate had been forewarned. He did not know that something so sweet could be so evil. Now, the fate of mankind hangs in the balance as Kadeem Hardison, TV's Dwayne Wayne. This honey I met the other night. Is bad, bad, Superman. And Bill Nunn from Do the Right Thing get busy in the first contemporary horror thriller of its kind. No! James Bond the Third's Death by Temptation. She's every man's dream and your worst nightmare. She leaves with men and you never see them again. <laughs> Death by Temptation, a new movie from Troma. Now this definitely looks like a movie I could get behind. A movie that knows what it is. It's a trauma movie, so it's gonna be so it's obviously gonna be a little bit over the top, but it looks like a legitimately good horror movie. I mean, this is directed by James Bond III, but it has a cast that includes Kadeem Hardison, Bill Nunn, Samuel L. Jackson, and uh, I mean, it looks like it could be it looks like it could be pretty good. Like it's like usually I don't usually look, this is the last couple of horror movies I've looked at on here look kind of generic. They look kind of forced. They look don't really look like they have too much to them. But this movie looks like it at least has some kind of fun aspects to it that could make it enjoyable. Even in a cultish, campy way, which it's Troma Entertainment, so I kind of expect that. But this is the first movie of this of the five that we have here that actually looks pretty promising for me. So I might check it out one day. I might check it out for Halloween. So, so yeah, Death by Temptation looks a lot of fun. Looks like a lot of fun. So, on to the next movie. friends were having the best time of their lives, a time they thought would never end. And then one day, their lives changed forever. Have you seen the paper? No, oh, I was just sitting there. Have you got it? Rare cancer seen in 41 homosexuals. The cause of the outbreak is unknown, and there is yet no evidence of contagion. It's the greatest challenge they've ever had to face. We've been given your name as a contact for John Deacon. Your friend has pneumonia. He has a high fever. How high? 105. Then they don't even tell him what they've told me and David. I'm so sorry. It's just not fair. Not fair! And they're facing it the only way they know how. With laughter. You look at yourself in the mirror and you say, I love my ears, I love my nose, I love myself. Well, I love my toes. <laughs> And I love my nose. Right. With courage. I'm an actor. And I have AIDS. They've changed their mind about the part for some reason. They're going to use somebody else. I'm sorry. But most of all, with each other. Uh, the most remarkable thing I ever saw anybody do was the way he took care of Sean, which wasn't easy for David. David taught me that... Life is only what you put into it. Never again would their lives be so simple. Never before had their friendships mattered so much. Winner of the Audience Award for Outstanding Motion Picture at the 1990 United States Film Festival. Longtime Companion. A film about our times, for our times. Interestingly enough, this is only the fourth movie to tackle the AIDS virus, 
We've had two movies in 85 on both NBC and ABC, which were the first two movies to tackle the AIDS issue. And then we had Party Glances in 86, which was the first theatrical release, but it was also the feature film debut for Steve Buscemi. And then we have this movie here, Longtime Companion, and it looks like they're tackling the issue on a very serious note, and they're also doing it with a good mix of dramatic moments and comedic moments. These ca these actors seem reasonably realistic. Like you wouldn't believe that. Like they're not the like they're luck They're thankfully not the typical gay stereotype gay character, but uh, they do. It looks like they're doing a pretty good job of tackling this issue in a way that. It doesn't feel like it's manipulative, it doesn't feel like it's forced, it doesn't feel like it's overpowering what the intention of the movie is. It looks like it's a legitimately, decently mo made movie, and it might be one I might be interested in checking out, but, um, got a pretty decent cast to it. Bruce Davison, Dermot Moroney, Patrick Cassidy, Mary Louise Parker, Campbell Scott. Great cast involved here. Uh, this director is Norman Renee, and I'm not too sure what else he did, let me... Actually, this was only this was his first movie because he would later go on and do uh, Prelude to a Kiss starring Alec Baldwin and Meg Ryan. But I mean, yeah, this movie looks like it could. This movie looks like it's a well-made movie. It looks like a movie that could be very good, and it might be something I might definitely check out one day. It looks like it could be a very well-made film. It looks like it's a very well-made film. Uh, that's my quick thoughts on that one. Long time companion. So on to the last movie, and that is Pathfinder. Not the Carl Urban Pathfinder, but a different Pathfinder. Going back to the Car Urban Pathfinder, apparently that's a remake of this movie, but loosely based, which basically means they probably took the name, they probably took the same kind of concepts from the original movie and put it into this movie, and they just made their own movie, because this movie, I wouldn't have even compared it to the original Pathfinder until I re until the, the new Pathfinder, until I read about this on here, but, um, I mean, it looks like it, looks like it could be a pretty decent movie, it's a... Oscar nominee for Best Forward Film. It was released originally in 87, and I don't know if Box Office Mojo misplaced the, tip, the release date here or what, but it says it was released in 89, but on the Box Office Mojo page, it came out this particular weekend in theaters. So I don't know what's going on there, but, um... I mean, the movie could... The movie looks kind of decent. I mean, it, it's most of that trailer you saw was just action going on, so I don't know what, I don't know about the story, I don't know about how good the characters could be, but I mean, it could be good, it could be, it could be decent, and it can't be any worse than what the, the 2007 movie was like, so, um, yeah, that's Pathfinder. And with that said, that's gonna wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies, uh, next time around, two movies coming our way. With some pretty big stars. We got Mel Gibson and Goldie Hawn in Burn on a Wire from D John Badham. And we also have Robin Williams in the comedy Cadillac Man. So we're getting... 
edging closer and closer to the summer movie season. And after that, we get into Memorial Day weekend. That's when it usually starts. So we'll definitely delve into those as we head into tomorrow. So thank you guys for watching. And as always, if you want to see more videos like this, check out the playlist on the next page. Check out the previous episode. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another new episode. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And until then, take care.